this was the time that I just started asking questions. And I remember we had these special like underwater um, waterproof paper that we got to use and I thought that was just the coolest thing. And for me, seeing kind of the hands-on aspect of medicine uh, was really interesting. WFSU Public Media STEM Adventures are brought to you by Atkins and FSU's National High Magnetic Field Laboratory. Since 2006, WFSU Public Media and the National High Magnetic Field Laboratory at Florida State University have held summer camps for young women interested in science, technology, engineering, and math, also known as STEM. Based on the national PBS program called SciGirls, these hands-on experiences at a variety of locations around our community have encouraged many middle and high school girls to consider and pursue careers in STEM fields. Over the years, the camps expanded, adding more girls and more adventures. But this year, COVID-19 changed the plans for 2020. Now, instead of heading into the field to learn and experiment, we're bringing STEM adventures to you. Today we have Alexa Putillo with us, who is a marine ecologist at FSU. And Alexa, do you want to tell us a little bit about your title and what you do? Absolutely. Um, thank you so much for having me, first of all. I'm so excited to talk to you about this. So yeah, my role over the past few years has been being a marine ecologist. And what that means is I was studying marine species, ecosystems, and more specific to ecology, investigating the interactions between marine species and their surrounding environment. And I just completed my master's degree in aquatic environmental science at Florida State University with the Marine Turtle Research, Ecology, and Conservation Group. And my research focused on the health and diet of juvenile green sea turtles in the Bahamas. So what did this look like? I was conducting research and that meant collecting data and collecting samples from the field during several weeks of field trips. And then after data collection, I was asking questions with this data that I had. So a large amount of time was spent collaborating with other labs and other individuals that helped run some of my samples. And then I was analyzing my data and finally writing all this up to be shared with others. How would you describe your job to the general public? I would describe my job as a, a researcher. So I am asking questions about marine species and then going and collecting data to answer these questions. But then not only am I a researcher, I would say I am a scientific communicator as well. So what good is data if it's not shared with others? So I am asking these questions about you know, the marine realm and then conduct, conducting analyses on my data and then writing it up um, to be shared. You've named two fields, but what got you interested in the marine ecology and then the communication of it? So I knew that I wanted to pursue some aspect of marine science when I was in high school. My interests were always in science and in math, um, but then when learning more about the marine realm, I just became captivated. The diversity of species and ecosystems really, really drew me in. But I didn't know that I wanted to do research until my sophomore year of my undergraduate. And at this time, I was in a travel course that took us to Costa Rica, and the group that I was in watched a sea turtle nest 
we saw an olive ridley turtle come up on the beach lay her eggs and then return back to this ocean and i remember so vividly this was the time that I just started asking questions. I had so many questions about this species and about its role in the oceans. And that really led me down a research path because I wanted to ask these questions about marine species and then collect my own data, analyze my own data and collaborate with others to answer them. And then the communication side. So I really kind of dove into research during my undergrad and then continued in that. and. When I, before I started my graduate degree, during summers, I started leading teen expeditions for a company called Earthwatch. And my role was basically acting as that liaison between the teenagers in our group and then the research staff. So I found such value and such excitement with kind of communicating these scientific concepts from the research staff to my group that I was in. And I realized that that was something that I was very passionate about as well. Oh, that's great, Alexa. What advice do you have for middle school and high school girls who are interested in a STEM career? Um, I think that I have two pieces of advice. Um, one that definitely really helped me. And then another one that I've really started to realize recently and over the last couple of years in this field. So something that helped me. My advice is to experience everything and not shy away from an opportunity because it might not be directly what you think you wanna do. Because it's also important to realize what we don't enjoy doing, right? Um, so by having so many different experiences, you gain such a unique skill set that you can apply to any endeavor later on. For example, I, like I said, my, my current research was in marine turtles. In my undergraduate degree, I only studied marine mollusks, so this invertebrate species. And you might be wondering, you know, how did that prepare you for, for what you're doing now? And all the research specimen that I collected were collected in seagrass ecosystems. So I became so knowledgeable about seagrass bed dynamics, which would prove so invaluable and something that I needed to understand for studying that diet of green sea turtles. So just experience absolutely everything. Um, and then the next piece of advice is something that I, I've really realized over the last couple of years. And it's that there is no set path for progressing in this field. Everyone I have ever worked with has a unique story of how they got to where they are. And it's so wonderful. And I think that science is best done when it's done collaboratively. And when we have all of these unique experiences as individuals, so with different backgrounds, different perspectives, and different ideas, I think it allows for, for better problem solving. So really just find what you're passionate about and dive into that. I love that advice. So have you had any setbacks in your career? And if so, how did you get through them? A particular setback is definitely currently happening now in regards to, to my career. Like I mentioned, I just graduated with my master's degree and I did have a couple of positions lined up for this summer. Like I mentioned, I usually lead teenage expeditions um, with the company called Earthwatch. And I was also gonna be participating in some different data collection over the summer. And that all got canceled due to COVID-19. Um, this is definitely frustrating, uh, definitely because I spent a lot of time early on in the semester when I was very busy planning and kind of solidifying these next steps and now having a kind of clean slate and looking for positions because a lot of places are not hiring right now and when they are their timeline and their start date keeps getting pushed back. So it was definitely a challenge, you know, having just graduated, being so ready to progress in this field and wanting to, you know, apply the skills that I learned throughout my master's. Um, but I've definitely kind of shifted my mindset into being just as positive and as patient as I can because for a couple of reasons, you know, I've stayed safe and healthy this entire time, which is the most important thing I can be thankful for. I realize that this is happening to so many people around the world. And I've been really trying to use this time to do activities that not only I love, but would make me a better scientist and a better educator. So for example, I signed up for an online conservation course. I applied and got a small grant to help with some educational materials for the Tampa Bay Estuary Program. And I also prepared for and got my freediving certification. Um, so in regards to my career, it's definitely, yes, a setback. But in regards to, you know, my personal growth in this field, I, I look at it positively. 
That's lovely. I love the positive attitude. So my last question is, recent social movements like Me Too and Black Lives Matter have called for improvements to the STEM climate for women and people of color. What do you think scientists and or STEM disciplines can do to change the climate within STEM to make it more inclusive? That is a good question. And it's definitely something that I have been reflecting a lot on recently. And I think it's important to realize the difference between an inclusive and an equitable learning environment. So we want all opportunities to be inclusive. And I think there are many areas that do a good job of this, but I think it's important to realize that not everyone that's applying or looking for these opportunities is in an equitable environment right now. And I think it's important to understand that and try and cater towards that. And like I mentioned before, science is best done collaboratively. And when we promote diversity in all of our different endeavors as researchers, as teachers, as communicators, I think when it's done with a diverse array of, of, of individuals, um, with all these different backgrounds and different perspectives, I think it allows for the best possible goal. So I think having that mindset you know, that promoting and including diversity is, is necessary in this field, and then doing everything that we can to not only make it inclusive, but make it equitable um, for everybody. All right, thanks, Alexa. Is there anything else that you wanted to, any last words or anything like that that you'd like to add? Just find what you're passionate about and, and pursue that. All right, well, thank you so much, Alexa. It was so great talking to you today, and best of luck in your future endeavors. Thank you so much. I'm Peyton Morley and I'm talking with fellow SciGirl Janessa Sullivan who is now a medical student. How did you get interested in medicine? Yeah, so I was always kind of interested in the idea of medicine. I really liked shows like Grey's Anatomy and things like that on TV. And then um, actually in SciGirls, one of the things we got to do was go to the local animal shelter and watch like veterinary medicine procedures. And for me, seeing kind of the hands-on aspect of medicine uh, was really interesting. And then from there, I just kind of took more science classes through high school, got more experience and shadowed and realized this is definitely something that I wanted to do. What was your favorite SciGirls experience during your time in SciGirls? Ooh, that's a hard one. Um, I think one of my favorites was going to um, the FSU Gulf Marine Lab. Um, and we got to go out on the boat and just learn more about like marine science and things like that. Um, and I remember we had these special like underwater um, waterproof paper that we got to use and I thought that was just the coolest thing. How did camp make you think about science as a career? Camp definitely made me realize that science was a more attainable career than I had thought. Um, being around so many women in science from so many different science professions I think had a big impact on me um, and made me realize you know that if they can do it I can do it too kind of thing. What's been your most challenging thing you've done pursuing a career now? I think there's, you know, different challenges at different times. For me, um, transitioning from high school to college, I went to Wellesley College, was a little bit of a transition, you know, being so far from home, and it was just a very different atmosphere from my high school experience. So that was a little bit of a transition for me. And then, you know, you have to take certain standardized tests and things to get into medical school, and that's always a bit of a challenge. So, you know, there's bumps along the way, but I feel like I've kind of made it through. What advice do you have for girls now who are pursuing STEM careers or are wanting to pursue STEM careers? I would say, you know, stick to it. It can be easy to get discouraged sometimes, you know, if you don't get the best grade that you wanted or your classes are all boys or things like that. But, you know, to really stick through it and try to find somebody that, you know, you could use as a mentor or even just like an older high school or college student that you can ask questions to because, you know, it seems hard in the moment, but knowing that there's other people that have been through it and made it through, I think can be really helpful. Yeah, SciGirls does a really good job putting all girls together 
and having more people like you around to help pursue exactly, it. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the great things about SciGirls is not just, you know, the mentors that you meet, but even, you know, the other girls in your cohort or the girls in the cohort above you, there's a lot of people around to use as inspiration. Did you stay friends with your girls in the SciGirls group? Yeah, so I, this was around the time that Facebook started to become cool. So a lot of us friends each other on Facebook um, and have kept up through that. But a lot of the girls in my cohort, you know, we're much older now. So most of us have moved away and kind of shifted into other things. But I've tried to keep up with at least some of the girls in my classes through social media and things like that. Yeah, it's always nice to make new friends who are pursuing the same thing in STEM. Yeah, exactly. What was it like knowing other girls who were also interested in STEM? Knowing other girls interested in STEM was very motivational for me. And actually, I went to a women's college for undergrad, partly for that same reason. Like, I, I knew that I wanted to go into medicine and pursue a career in STEM. So going to a women's college and really having that emphasis on women going into STEM was something that I sought out and, like, I really appreciate. And I think it's really important to if you feel like you benefit from that kind of an atmosphere to surround yourself with that for sure. What type of medicine are you going to be pursuing after medical school? I'm not sure yet. I haven't quite decided. Um, right now, this summer, I'm actually working on a project for a reconstructive plastic surgeon. Um, so I'm interested in that now. But they say that, you know, you never, what you say you want to go into when you start medical school is usually never what you actually go into by the time you're a full-fledged doctor. So we'll see. But right now, I'm interested in surgery. Do you have any other interests other than surgery right now? Um, in medicine, I'm also interested in dermatology. I worked in that. I took a year off between uh, graduating college and starting medical school. And I worked in dermatology during that time. So that's something that I've also been interested in. And I think, you know, growing up in Florida and being in the sun has definitely also kind of shifted my interest towards that. But those are my two main medical interests. Um, but other than that, you know, I'm constantly discovering new fields of medicine that I'd never heard of and learning, meeting new doctors and learning new things. So it's hard to say what I'll end up doing for sure. If you want to have joined SciGirls, do you think that you would still be pursuing the career you have now? It's hard to say. I definitely think it's a possibility, but I don't know that I would have kind of decided so early on and because you know I did sci girls I did the IB program in high school and kind of catered that more towards the science track so I took a lot of chemistry and biology and things like that in high school to kind of prepare myself better going into college and things like that so I think if I hadn't done sci girls I probably wouldn't have done that I'd like to think that you know I would have still found a passion for medicine but I think that sci girls definitely helped a lot and helps me get a little bit of a head start if you will. Thank you, Janessa, for joining us. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. It was nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. And today I'll be making this sea turtle out of only four materials. The so first material would be some recycled cardboard. The second material would be blue and green construction paper that I found in my trash. The third and fourth material would just be scissors and hot glue, or you can use a glue stick. For step one, you'll grab the cardboard and cut off all the sides. 
The cardboard will be used to be the base of the construction paper that will be used to make the whole sea turtle. It should look like this. For step 2, you'll grab some green construction paper and start ripping it into little pieces. After a while, you should have this huge pile of blue and green construction paper. For step 3, you'll grab the cardboard and start cutting out the tail. And then, you'll start cutting out the feet. I then clear my workspace so it's more neat. For step 4, you'll grab some more cardboard and start cutting out the head of the turtle. For step 5, you'll grab your hot glue or glue stick and start gluing the paper on. The hot glue doesn't seem to be working, so today I'll be using a glue stick. I'll glue the cardboard and start throwing the paper crumbs onto the cardboard. Well that didn't work, so instead I'll be gluing them one by one onto the cardboard. I'll show you the finished product. There we go. Now I'll be gluing the feet and the tail onto green construction paper than which I would cut out. I'll be grabbing the sea turtle head and start gluing it onto blue construction paper. I will then cut out the head. For the next step, I'll start cutting out the green feet and tail from the green construction paper. Next, I'll grab the shell and start to assemble all of the pieces together. I decided to make a little face on the sea turtle. How cute. This is the finished product. Thanks for watching. I had so much fun making my sea turtle out of trash and recycled items at my home. I hope during quarantine that you can make something just like it. Thanks for watching!
WFSU Public Media STEM Adventures are brought to you by Atkins and FSU's National High Magnetic Field Laboratory.